Tonight on Murrow News 8, campus police arrest a WSU professor at his office. And Spokane police arrest a doctor for enticing a minor online. And locals catch eggs falling from the sky. Murrow News 8 starts now. From Studio B on the campus of Washington State University, this is Pullman's only nightly newscast. This is Murrow News 8. Good evening, I'm Dax McCoy. And I'm Doug Taylor. Welcome to Murrow News 8. Over the weekend, officers from Pullman Police Department arrested a Washington State University research technologist at Clark Hall. Daryl Bivens joins us live to tell us more about the nature of the arrest. Daryl? Thanks, Dax. Officers from Pullman PD arrested 56-year-old Robert Marshall Long in his office here at Clark Hall on Friday for possessing and uploading photos of children engaging in explicit sex acts. Detective Internet Against Crime Investigators from both Pullman and Moscow Police Departments conducted a lengthy investigation on Long, leading them to search Long's home address. During the search, investigators found numerous images on Long's computer. How did Pullman PD get turned on to Long to begin with? Pullman PD received a tip from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children about a man that might possess child pornography back in August. Now, if convicted, Long could serve up to 10 years in prison in addition to a $20,000 fine. Reporting live from Clark Hall, I'm Daryl Bivens, Merle News 8. Staying on campus, police arrested a 24-year-old student after allegedly threatening to post pictures of a female student if she refused to have sex with him. Uri Joe Willis allegedly showed up at the woman's home after communicating via social media. Police arrested Willis and booked him into Whitman County Jail without bail. More criminal news, police arrested a Spokane physician during a child exploitation sting operation. A court found 30-year-old Chavis Jackson guilty of enticing a minor over the internet via a Craigslist ad. Jackson claims he did not intend to engage in sexual acts, but he wanted to play a game with the child. A Moscow man who allegedly threatened to shoot up two schools faces jail time and a fine. 26-year-old Michael Dane Mastro Jr. heads to Lataw County Second District Court April 11th to respond to a misdemeanor charge of threatening violence on school grounds. If convicted, Mastro Jr. faces up to six months in a jail and a $1,000 fine. This Easter, Living Faith Fellowship Church dropped Easter eggs from a helicopter to celebrate the holiday. Kids of all ages ran around to pick them up. Abby Tudor has details of the special day. Before the helicopter egg drop was a church service where several people sang worship songs and performed dances, along with a sermon from Pastor Phil Vance. It was really powerful and um, I'm always very touched by that um, service. Here at Living Faith Fellowship Church, there's about to be a helicopter drop where they're going to drop hundreds of eggs for kids to come and get them, just like this egg, where they get different kinds of candy. The crowd watched as the helicopter came into view in the sky. Last night we had a conversation and my daughter was like, Mom, I'm very excited because today like we're going to pick eggs from the helicopter, so we are always very excited. Sometimes it can be kind of scary because it, might, because it feels like sometimes he senses in the air, like way in the air, it, sometimes it feels like it's about to drop on you. The eggs finally fell from the sky and kids rushed to grab as many as they could, with a 15 to 20 egg limit, that is. Overall, the community had a blast celebrating Easter this Sunday, both through worship and with eggs full of candy. I'm Abby Tudor, Murrow News 8. When we come back, President Trump invites Vladimir Putin to the White House. And the leader of North Korea visits his southern neighbor for the first time ever. Stay tuned. Sun. Wake 
the sun, wake the sun, wake the sun. President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump kicked off the traditional White House Easter egg roll today. The White House hosted nearly 30,000 adults and children, and the First Lady put her mark on the event by adding lawn bowling to the list of activities. This year marks the 140th anniversary of the event, but it wasn't all fun and games. President Trump touted his success with the economy and the military's increased funding. The President also made a statement blaming the Democrats for lack of action on the DACA program. Along with making the announcement at the egg roll, President Trump made another declaration over Easter weekend, tweeting, quote, no more DACA deal, end quote. President Trump published the tweet in response to protests at the border and with more than 1,000 Central American migrants marching toward the U.S. border for asylum. The Democrats have really let them down. They've really let them down. They had this great opportunity. The Democrats have really let them down. It's a shame. And now people are taking advantage of DACA, and that's a shame. Immigrants in the caravan said their reasons for heading north have less to do with U.S. immigration policy and more to do with conditions in their home countries. Interviewees say violence, poverty, and political unrest in their home countries forced them to make the journey. The journey to the border during Holy Week takes place annually, but Trump's tweets made this year's event especially noteworthy. White House officials say that President Trump invited Russian President Vladimir Putin to the White House for a summit meeting sometime later this year. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders says Trump and Putin began talking about a possible face-to-face -face meeting on March 20th when Trump called Putin to congratulate him on his presidential re-election. White House officials say the two presidents currently do not plan to meet until November for the G20 and a specific date for the White House meeting has not been discussed yet. Government officials in China imposed tariffs on 128 U.S. products today in response to President Trump's actions against Beijing in various trade agreements. The United States' original tariffs affected imports of steel and aluminum from China. Chinese tariffs include pork, apples, oranges, almonds, grapes, watermelons, among other things. China imposed the tariffs in hopes of forcing Trump to decide whether or not to stay committed to these strict trade agreements. China's first space station safely came back down to Earth this morning over the South Pacific. According to the China Man Space Agency, most of Tiangong-1 burned up as it re-entered the atmosphere earlier this morning. The Chinese launched the modular laboratory in 2011 as a trial run toward building a permanent space station, which the nation hopes will launch in 2022. Scientists tracked the space station in its final few weeks as no one controlled the craft's final descent or re-entry point. Many in the North Korean government hated South Korea's popular music, K-pop, for years. At one point, North Korean leaders condemned South Korea's playing of its top hits with loudspeakers across into the DMZ as an act of war. However, recently both countries continue to take positive steps forward following talks earlier this month. Kim Jong-un even became the first North Korean leader to attend a K-pop concert. One of the songs performed, Our Wish's Reunification, celebrated hopes for peace. Former South African First Lady Winnie Marikizela Mandela died early this morning at age 81. Mandela served as a symbol for the fight for equality to the people of Africa. Winnie and her former husband Nelson Mandela were both jailed for their actions striving for equality. Ms. Mandela passed peace peacefully among her family and loved ones after a long illness left her in the hospital on and off since the beginning of the year. Winnie spent 30 of her 38 years of marriage supporting Nelson behind bars. When we come back, Jesse Maywald gives us an update on this unpredictable weather. And later, an update on the governator. Stay with us. Right. <laughs> mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner oh. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. 
There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. When I looked outside this morning, the snow covered the ground and it just kept coming. Jesse Maywald tells us what we can look forward to this week. How many more days like this should we expect, Jesse? Well, looking forward here um, and uh, for the rest of today, the, we're going to keep seeing snow. Um, it was uh, 38 degrees um, and uh, it's, yeah, pretty, pretty different than uh, kind of what we were seeing last week. Um, we did have some uh, winds today coming from the southwest uh, at about 15 miles an hour and uh, we did have an uh, average of about 29 degrees today. So right below freezing, I know it did take a while for uh, some of the roads to start melting for today. Um, across the rest of Washington, um, Wenatchee uh, was able to get uh, up to 52 degrees along with Yakima. And uh, Spokane was at 47 and Pullman uh, at 43. And uh, looking over to the west side, um, Seattle actually uh, had pretty decent weather too. Uh, 51 for Seattle and 53 for Olympia, uh, 52 for Vancouver. Uh, weather seems pretty warm over there. Uh, looking uh, towards tomorrow, we're going to wake up and might be a little bit warmer than it was today, about 45 degrees. And then it's going to ease up and get a little bit warmer um, after that. And then it's going to uh, be about 41 degrees. Um, at about at nighttime. And uh, looking for the five day, um, it's going to be around 46 degrees on Wednesday, and uh, it's going to kind of keep raining throughout the rest of the uh, week. Uh, so make sure you guys have your umbrellas. If you guys have any, you know, outdoor stuff, maybe wait until uh, the weekend. And uh, that's all I have. Back to you guys. Next up, the Terminator gets a new heart valve. More on that story when we come back. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. No more pencils, no more books. No more teachers, dirty looks. School's out for summer. What this place needed was better graduation rates. So we worked with schools like Henry Ford High, and now they're up 18%. To help us do more good this year, go to unitedway.org, because great things happen when we live united. The Terminator and former governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger, says hasta la vista, baby, to an old heart valve. His heart surgery involved doctors replacing a valve installed in 1997 for a heart defect. They told him to come with them if he wanted to live. The former film actor reportedly responded in the most Schwarzenegger way possible after awakening from surgery, saying, quote, I'm back, end quote. I'm not a good Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonator, it's but I did my best. You know what, it's all good because this is just a crazy and awesome story. The fact that we have a guy that's already out here that's getting a, a heart transplant that's as old as him, he's tough. You know, he was uh, in the Olympics and he was a big time movie star, so good to see him that he's still alive. Politically, too. Thank you for watching. Join us every weeknight at 7 and 10 p.m. for Pullman's only nightly newscast. Have a great night, and don't forget to follow Murrow News 8 on Facebook and Twitter. Hasta la vista, Pullman.